Ready for more ARM template goodness? Well, join us on the next episode of the DevOps Lab, where Pierre is going to dive into looping. Welcome to the DevOps Lab. Today, we have a very special guest with us, Pierre Roman. And we're going to dive into ARM templates even more. So what's up, Pierre? Hey, how you doing, Abel? Doing pretty good. So what are you going to show us today? Today, we're going to talk about loops. So you mean looping within the ARM template itself? That's correct. Um, there's only one way in ARM templates to iterate on a resource, whether or not you want to deploy 20 versions of the identical resource, or you want to run through uh, a, a set of specific resources that all look the same but have different names. For example, um, if you want to have a RAID array of 16 different disks uh, attached to a server, whether it's um, Windows or Linux, in your template, you don't want to have to define 16 different disks. You'll want to define it once and say, give me 15, 16 copies of that. Right, right, right. So this is what loops do in, in Azure, and there's only one way of doing that. Cool. So I get loops because I write code. I don't know anything about ARM templates, so I don't know how you actually do that. Can you show me how you can do this mystical looping thing inside of ARM? Absolutely. OK, so when we're looking at loops in ARM templates, there's really just one function that does it, and it's the copy function. And the way the copy function does it, if we start with a very simple um, template, so creating a storage account, I always default to that one because it it goes very quickly when you want to uh, to demo it. Mm -hmm. So if you'll notice in my template here, I've got a storage account that uh, has a value of two. Mm -hmm. So I'm basically going to say, I'm going to deploy two of them. So when I prompt the user or as part of the parameters passed on by Azure DevOps or other means, I can define how many of those storage accounts I actually get to deploy. Then when I look at the resource itself, the only difference is this section here where we're actually saying for this resource that I'm going to call storage account, uh, there's a copy loop. The name of the loop is storage copy. The name of the loop means absolutely nothing outside of helping it count how many iteration of that particular uh, resource I want to deploy. And then it just goes through it and say, I want to deploy it two times in this particular case. The only problem is for storage accounts, uh, you can't have a storage account that has the same name. Right. So yeah, there's the, the, the problem of having unique um, names. And even in our first here, we have a, the unique string, but as we know, the unique string is in a ARM template is a ashed value of the resource group where it sits. So if you deploy the same resource in the same resource group, you're always going to get the same hash. Mm -hmm. So that unique string is doesn't necessarily become unique. So right. we add the copy index. So the copy index, really, well, all it does is it keeps track of which iteration I'm on. So in this case, I've got two. So if I was going to deploy this, so let's deploy this. And I'm just going to copy this command because nobody wants to see me uh, cut and pay, uh, try to type this without uh, mm -hmm. a, a load of different typos. And I run this. So basically, I'm saying, OK, do an, a, a deployment uh, to a resource group using this particular um, one simple loop uh, JSON file. And if I switch to my resource group and go to my deployment, see there's one that's going. And currently, I've got two loops because they're running in parallel. That's the other, the other beauty of loops is that it'll go and deploy them in parallel. So you don't have to wait. That's pretty cool. So right now, it's already done. So if I go to my resource group and refresh, I have my two different uh, res uh, storage account. And in here, you can see that one is 0 and the other one is 1. So it kept track of the iteration it was at and used that copy index 
in order to generate that uh, that name. Cool. Very cool. All right. Now, so could you jump back to the code again? Because I think I missed something. Okay. So you created this resource, right? And you give it the name. So I see where the name is unique. Yes. And you, in the copy, that just means, okay, you're going to do this for however the storage account count number, that, that's going to be two, right? So it's going to do it two times. Uh, how many times the parameter dictates? Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. And, and the account properties, account type is the storage account. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. That was the piece I was missing. Gotcha. So I can the do this. The, for the only thing that changes is this section here where the copy, you define how, what the copy is going to, the copy loop is going to be. Mm -hmm. And the name, because we want to include the copy index in the name. I gotcha. Outside so, of that, there's nothing that changes in the iteration of that loop within that resource. So if I wanted to create, let's say, for whatever reason, I wanted to create like 10 app services that are exactly the same, I would do the exact same thing, but I'd create my app service and then I'd just stick in there the copy command and well, I'd have to have the right count and, yep. and then give it a unique name. That's correct. Cool. And okay. you could use the same name, but just add the zero, one, two, three, up to up to ten if you wanted to deploy ten. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, one of the things that uh, you may want to do is have, let's say, a hundred disks or a hundred VMs or a hundred of, uh, of a resource, but you don't want to deploy them all at the same time. So you could batch them. Mm. And the way we batch them is exactly the same thing as what we did before. So we have our storage account. We have our storage account here with which um, uh, the amount of value we want to deploy. And the only difference is when we get to the copy itself. Now we're doing serial, so one after the other in batches of two. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That makes so sense. It's a way for you to control how your resources are being deployed. If we don't want the batch size, we can do, still do serial, but then it'll be one, then it waits for it to complete, then it does the other, then it waits for it to complete, and then it goes on and on. Unless we change the mode to parallel, and then it just goes out and does them all at the same time. So this is a simple loop, but with a bit more control. Cool. Very now, cool. The other scenario that you may want to do is I'm creating three different machines or three different storage accounts for three different pieces of your solution. So in this case, if I look and we can do an array. So let's say if I want to do a storage account for Tailwind Trader, one for Contoso, one for Fabricam, and one for Coho. Mm-hmm. Now I can create an array of names, and in my loop, the only thing that changes in my loop. Oh, because gotcha. I need to get the length of my parameter array, because I don't have an integer to say I've got four names in there, run it four times. So you have to tell it to count the length of your array, and it uses that in order to say how many times it's going to iterate. But when it creates the name of the, um, when it creates the name, it's actually going to use the name at that array position. Gotcha. And we calculate the array position the way we always calculate array position, square brackets, and inside of it is the copy index which is the length of our array. Oh, okay. Got it. That, that actually so, makes sense. Cool. So you could have a library of names that you want to create. Um, I don't know what use case, like real world use case it might be, but if you want to have, instead of numbers and something, you want something meaningful, you could have a dictionary of names and iterate through those names and give those to those resources. So it's still a simple loop, but with a different twist to it. Yeah, cool. This this totally makes sense. Very yeah. cool. Yep. Now, those simple loops don't just apply to resources or to like a VM or a storage account. It can also apply to properties 
within a resource. Hmm. So if I look at, I've got a one here, and if I drag down to my resource and my VM, so I've got a virtual machine here, and mm -hmm. let's say in my virtual machine, I wanted to define 10 data disks or 20 data disks. In my parameter section, or my properties section, sorry, where I would normally have just a data disk section, I wrap the data disk section in a copy loop. Mm, okay. And then it will, when it gets to it, will read the copy loop and say, okay, what is my count? Grab the parameter. And then it will deploy X amount of one terabyte data disks empty and attach them automatically to that VM. Interesting. Because data disks are one thing. If you could, it could be IP address, you mm -hmm. want to de deploy fifteen IP address and and make them as a um, static IP address, you could identify that uh, within the resource and and iterate through the loop inside the resource inside the properties, as opposed to at the resource level. Got it. Wow, this really is powerful. You can loop through all sorts of stuff in here. Yeah. So when you put it all together, mm -hmm. you can end up with some fairly beefy templates. Uh, but they're like the caveat that one of the reasons I wanted to show that template is if, let's say, you deploy multiple VMs. So in this particular one, I've got uh, uh, Linux VM and Windows VMs. And in my parameter, I've got a VM count, which is going to say, how many of those do you want? So if I'd say, give me 10 VMs. A mm -hmm. VM as dependencies on network interface card, mm -hmm. private and or public addresses. So you have to pre-create these ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So how do you create these ahead of time and not uh, uh, in a significant amount of numbers so that when you create your VM, they each get one? So you end up having to go to, and if I go to my Windows NIC, same thing is I use the copy index, but using the VM count parameter. Yeah. So if I've got 10 VMs, I'm going to have 10 NICs for my machine. I'm going to have 10 IP addresses for my machine. And you can all link them all together in one template. Now, that can be fairly short, but deploy a whole range of different uh, resources, but all in um, in order, so parallel, serial, and you have control over that, how many you're going to do, versus having to deploy what we used to do, uh, deploy the resource, cut, paste, modify, cut, paste, modify, cut, <laughs> paste, modify. You end up with a, a, an ARM template that's a couple thousand lines long uh, that's hard to read and hard to troubleshoot because which one of those resources has just thrown a shoe? Yeah, this looping is a lot more powerful than I thought it was when you first showed it to me. This is great. Well, I, yeah. That's what I was saying earlier. It's like, it's fairly simple, but it's quite powerful when you I can harness it properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got the, the simple example. I, I immediately understood that. Yeah, yay me, right? Like this one here, I, I kind of get it, but I'm going to have to like do this myself to like really get it. This is awesome stuff here. Yeah, you really have to 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 try a couple of simple templates and then you move on to uh, a more, especially when you have dependencies between resources and those resources don't have the same counts. You mm -hmm. really have, it's more of a thought pattern change than a coding change. Right, right, right. Man, being able to loop within your ARM templates like this, I can't believe how powerful and useful this is. So viewers, if you want to learn more about this, about ARM templates, about all the different ways you can harness the power of looping within your ARM templates, check out those links below and join us next time on the DevOps Lab. Mm -hmm.